Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the last front load before we go into the other video. What's a day off? No, no, tell me. It, uh, I don't know. Welcome to another episode of Spilly Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, I also wanted to apologize in advance. I am having severe spring allergies issues in my head. Oh my god, I'm on pain beds, folks, and it still feels like there's a tiny hammer hitting me right here. So... Sorry for all that, any throat clearing, weirdness, apologizing, advance, you know. <laughs> all right, to the disclaimers, right? So, in the description box, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. So folks, you know the drill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. We also can have linked in their Neuroclastics public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding folks in case the JRC actually has the balls to see through of their threat. Also linked in there is the Ozark's first article regards to the Agape Boarding School, now known as Stone for Help Boarding School situation. This is a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has in pending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it, all which have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services and include the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault. Child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor still on the premises with full access of the boys upon multiple, again folks, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You have an attorney general too busy chasing after drag queens to care about the proven pedophiles in our state. And you've got a governor who needs to be committed himself. So please send help. Share that article on all your social media, folks. We got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, Jennifer Masumba's behavioral sheet of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and get clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you do got young children present, please, folks, Ed phones, all right? This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and we speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously, folks, parental supervision is advised. Trigger warning, we are about to once again descend into the mad ravings of the lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to hear gaslighting, victim blaming, lies, pseudoscience, all coming from a man with a massive ego and even larger God complex. So be prepared for the egotistical stupid we are about to read, all right? All right, so where we left off. What's wrong with punishments is that they work immediately but give no long-term results. B.F. Skinner interviewed the New York Times, 1987. This is another example of the MDRIs misleading the reader by providing incomplete misinformation. Subsequent to the interview referred to, Skinner issued a statement on punishment that clarified his position regarding the usefulness of punishment in the treatment of certain behaviors. In his statement below, he wrote, 
Some autistic children, for example, will seriously injure themselves or engage in other excessive behavior unless drugged or restrained. Another treatment is then virtually impossible. If brief and harmless adversive stimuli made precisely contingent on self-destructive or other excessive behavior, suppress behavior and leave the children free to develop in other ways, I believe it can be justified. You're using BF Skitter, dude. Allow me to elaborate. B.F. Skinner has been on the shit list for years for the majority of folks because of his inhumane cruelty of his experiments that were done on mice and animals. This is the guy you want to clarify, doctor. In defense of yourself... I hate to go Gen X, but dude. Dude. But people like B.F. Skinner and Dr. Matthew Israel seem to can't seem to comprehend or understand is that there is another way besides punishment and torture to help with these sorts of situations. But these doctors, whether through genuine misunderstanding or just out and out laziness, don't want to comprehend it. It's very simple. When we have a neurotypical teen drinking, running around with the wrong people, vandalizing things, doing stupid stuff, do we then decide, well, we need to program the behaviors out of them, so we're going to put them on electric shock device just below the lethal limit and shock them until it goes away. No, Karen, this is not how it works. Unless you're the troubled teen industry, in which case, I guess. But we all know it doesn't work, does it? It compounds the trauma, doesn't it? When you compound the trauma in an already aggressive person, what happens when they snap? This is why psychology and psychiatry have moved away since, from such dinosauric ideas. Modern psychiatry and psychology have moved on, doctor. These people want you to live in the dark ages here. They do not want you to know the leaps and bounds that pharmacology has leaped to since when this place was founded. They don't want you to know how psychology has evolved by leaps and bounds. See, these days, how it works, I can say this as one who's been the patient and also as an individual who has worked in this field for my sake, for the Missouri Department of Mental Health. Here's how it works these days and has since about the late 90s. Allow me to elaborate for you. The behavior is noted. Then, homework is done. Therapy, hear me, therapy is done. One of the things when I first got into therapy that was done was to delve into my past, delve into me. Very, very pointed questions. So what do you feel right before you go into name the behavior? What is going on at that time? What's going on around you? What's being said? Or even because I'm autistic, was there a smell? Was there clothing? There's always a reason folks this is modern psychology they do not accept that they come out of nowhere and that for the only way is punishment we've come a long way thank 
God, at least in some areas of the world. They got to the bottom of it, folks. They asked the right questions to kind of come up with a determination of what things come into place before a particular so-called behavior. God, I hate this word at this point. What is happening beforehand? What is triggering that behavior? And then through therapy, through reasonable accommodations, and yes, when the situation calls for it, the right medication properly applied is used. Not to deal with the behavior. The behavior is the offshoot. It's not the issue. It's the product of the issue. You got to deal with the issue. You deal with that. Like I said, through therapy, through teaching coping mechanisms, for assistive devices and a reasonable accommodations, and yes, even medications, when the situation calls for it. You know what happens when you deal with what's triggering the behavior, don't you? You have less and less and less of that behavior. It doesn't entirely go away because we're human beings and nothing entirely goes away. That's the lie they try to sell you to keep filching money out of you. But it brings it down to what I like to call a base level. To where it may still happen on occasion, but I'm not to the point that it completely annihilates my ability to function in society. People like B.F. Skinner and Dr. Matthew Israel do not believe I am capable of that. They do not believe that individuals who are nonverbal and otherwise autistic, the same, you know, like the autism moms who try to shout me down and scream at me that I'm not like their child, that that would never work for their kids. They can't talk. They don't have a way to advocate, so they must do it for them and be their voice. And this punishment is the only thing that's going to stop their kid from possibly killing themselves or others. It's a lie, people. It's a lie. <sighs> Basics are this. Speech is not the only way of communication. Behavior is a form of communication. You have sign language. Many nonverbals who are autistic communicate having been taught sign language or other forms of assistive devices. This is where modern medicine, for the love of God, comes in. That way, they are able to tell you What's going on right before the behavior takes place? See where I'm going here. These doctors, and yes, even some of these parents, live in the past. Anytime anyone like me who comes in who has more knowledge of the new school, so to speak saying that there are ways to help them, to help their children communicate so we can get to those root issues, just scream in your face that it's not true. Where does that come from? People like Dr. Israel, Dr. Skinner, and all the doctors who have peddled ABA into infinity for decades. I'm going to go ahead and close on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. 
the few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and please don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.